Hello everyone, Storm101 here. Today we'll be talking about what's now Tropical Depression 9 in the Caribbean. This could become a major system when it gets into the Gulf of Mexico over the next several days. It could bring some major impacts for some people on the Gulf Coast. Now we're going to get started with the National Hurricane Center outlook here. Now, this is a little bit of outdated outlook. This is back at 8 o'clock. They update their outlook again in 10 minutes. So probably at the end of the video, we'll see what their code of uncertainty forecast will show. But they do have a very high 90% chance, which they got a lot of words going on here. But basically here, there's going to be a pretty big system in there that could bring in storm surge, heavy rainfall, and strong winds here with this system here. We also got an invest, I believe that's 97L and then 98L down here. I might have got this backwards again. I'm not sure. But I'm not too worried about with these systems right now. This could become a named storm in the next few days, but these will be fish storms. There will be no threat to the United States or to any land with those systems. So we got to try it with pressure 9. If you guys don't believe me, here's their Twitter here. They do show track with pressure 9 located over the West Central Caribbean Sea at 11 a.m. So they'll be issuing advisories here in about nine minutes here. So we'll check out, we'll check that out at the end of the video. So here's infrared shadow imagery here. There is a little bit of dry air off to the northwest here. That's going to be due to an upper level low that's nearby. But this has become better organized here today than it was yesterday here and right around in here especially on satellite you'll be able to tell where the circulation is and the circulation is formed a little further north here so this is going to be taking the northern track here so we kind of got that taken care of there so that question is out of way so it's like the low pressure system or the low level circulation will be developing on the northern end of the storm Let's check out the hurricane models, and you do see here, there is a better agreement here with the models here, especially with the hurricane models. You see where they all take them? Central and southeastern Louisiana. Yeah, that's not good. The forecast could still shift around. Keep in mind that there's still a few days to go before it makes landfall, so this could shift around over the next few days. It's also about to go through parts of northwestern Cuba, which I believe they're getting ready to issue tropical storm watches for those areas and maybe warnings as well very soon here. So it'll be going over some land here over Cuba, but it probably won't affect it too much. So, yeah, on that. And it also tracks it through, again, central southeastern Louisiana. Uh, far southeastern Arkansas kind of goes along the Mississippi River into northern Mississippi, then through Tennessee, eventually to parts of Kentucky. And so that's where the majority of these hurricane balls are bringing towards. So, yeah, this is definitely a system here we need to monitor. Here's the GFS ensembles here. Pretty much every single bottle here shows it below 980 millibars, which is, can indicate either pretty much a hurricane and you do see here, the average mean here, it's 974 millibars. Yeah, that's a hurricane strength here. And pretty large spread in the GFS ensembles that goes as far west as parts of central Texas. But I think these are going to be more outliers right now, especially for that one there. I think that's going to be a big outlier. But they also go as far east as southern Mississippi. So there's still a decent spread here. But generally speaking here, Pay attention to the cluster of bottles here, which is right here. That's where your cluster of bottles are going to. So basically, southeastern Louisiana looks to be the target for the GFS ensembles. Here's the GFS ensembles parallel, and you do see here a pretty large spread here. But again, these are outliers to Southern Texas. I think Southern Texas is in the clear with the system here for right now. It could shift further west. We'll see. But right now, it looks to be Louisiana to be the target. You do see some obstacles as far east as the Alabama-Mississippi state line, as far west as parts of southeastern Texas. So it's still a large spread here with these models here. But generally speaking here, most of these models kind of bring it to Louisiana. And you see there, they do track through parts of the Tennessee Valley and the Ohio Valley. 
into the Mid-Atlantic afterwards. Here's the intensity guidance here for the models and, well, for the hurricane models. You do see our three models do bring up to a Category 3 hurricane. We cannot rule out a major hurricane on this system. But I think the outliers here are going to be the ones that are staying at Tropical Storm. I think it's likely going to be stronger than Tropical Storm. Uh, but the majority do bring it to a Category 1 hurricane. I think that's likely with this system here, given the fact that there's not going to be a whole lot of wind shear. And on top of that, you got very warm sea surface temperatures and a lot of ocean heat content. So we'll check out those maps here in just a moment. Let's check out some of the medium range guidance of these models here. And you do see here, the GFS model does take it through parts of northwestern Cuba. You'll start to see this turn a little bit more to the northwest here. It's actually trending closer to the Florida Keys here. So parts of South Florida may need to watch the system as well. At least the Florida Keys here may need to watch the system here. Watch how that rapidly intensifies before it makes landfall. I mean, it's a slow suppression of 950 m bill bars. So it actually makes landfall into New Orleans here. It goes through Mississippi. That could bring in a pretty good tornado threat across parts of Alabama and the Florida Panhandle. That'd be another threat to watch with this system here. Will be the chance for some tornadoes. And then that takes us up into Tennessee, Kentucky, into the midweek here. And there's a couple steering factors with this system here. One thing is that the Bermuda High is a little further west than normal this year. Plus, there's going to be a stationary front that will be coming in for the north here. So really, this system here, we go going in something like this in between the stationary front and the high pressure system that will be setting up right here. So Really, it's big as theory factor right now is to Bermuda High, but there's also going to be a stationary front just to the northwest as well. Right now, none of the models show this big coming stationary like some model run showed yesterday. None of the models show that anymore, which is good news. And then again, you see there how it kind of moves up to the northeast. Let's check out the Canadian model. And this is probably a little bit on the weaker end uh, from the models, but it does make landfall as probably a hur category one hurricane as well with 985 millibars. And it does go through uh, kind of along the Mississippi River. Could bring in again a tornado threat for probably people as far north as Tennessee at this point, and down as far south as the coastline of Alabama in the Florida Panhandle. That could also bring a lot of rain across parts of. Mississippi, Tennessee, and into Kentucky, and probably into parts of West Virginia as well for the Canadian model. So we'll check out the rainfall for the Canadian model. So this is going to be another big concern here is how much rain this thing is going to put down. And it looks like most of the rainfall will probably stick around Louisiana. That doesn't surprise me. These models here. Rainfall amounts could be over 12 inches of rain. And that's a lot of rain for one system. You do see these models here continue up into Mississippi with a wide spread of 2 to 6 inches of rain. It even goes up to parts of central western Tennessee where areas do not need any rain. If it continues up to parts of Kentucky and eventually to West Virginia and even to parts of Maryland and Northern Virginia as well. So even areas up further up north needs to watch the system as well because you guys can see some flooding issues out of the system as well. We'll check out the ICOM model, which is currently updating on its 12Z run right now. So we'll go back to 6Z really quick. You'll start to see the track of the system here on here. See here's Chocolate Depression 9 down here. Get it right across Cuba. And you see here then it makes landfall into southeastern Louisiana. I mean check out all that rain inland. I mean, that's about two feet of rain right there. So, rainfall is definitely going to be a big concern here. It's just not just going to be the winds here. You also got the heavy rainfall threat, even for a chance for maybe for a few tornadoes, and also for storm surge as well. So, all the threats will definitely be on the table for this tropical system here. In areas further up north, I think you got some main threats. So it's going to be heavy rainfall, maybe some isolated tornadoes as well out of the system. 
But check out the European model. So we'll skip to Saturday here. This is sustained winds, and the European model is showing a tropical storm at this point. But look what happens here before it makes landfall. At this point, it's a Category 1 hurricane with sustained winds of 70 to 75 miles per hour. And check out these winds here. Winds as high as 85 miles per hour. And then you check out wind gusts. Wind gusts could be as high as 120 miles per hour. So, it's basically a Category 1 hurricane. Possibly getting close to Category 2 before it makes landfall. And it crosses over to Louisiana. And then at this point here... It's still a, uh, actually, it's a trap with a pressure at this point. But check out these wind gusts, so, out of the system here. At this point, it's a trap with a pressure, but check out these wind gusts. 65 miles per hour, maybe a little bit overkill with the wind gust. But you see there, how it continues to move to the northeast here. They're moving across parts of Tennessee. And here's the same winds. At this point, this is still a trap with a pressure here, even though the sustained winds or below 20 miles per hour. You still got pretty strong wind gusts out of the system here. So I'll still consider this as a tropical, tropical depression at this point. It moves over to Rocky Mountains and it still continues to move to the east. And then again, rainfalls can be the biggest concern out of the system. You definitely see the swath here of heavy rain. Really anywhere from the eastern half of Louisiana. Then moving up to northwestern Mississippi. Then to central Tennessee. And eventually into southeastern Kentucky. Into... West Virginia. So a lot of rain is definitely going to be coming out of the system. Here's the GFS model here, and it shows a lot of rain for areas across southeastern Louisiana, most of Mississippi. Go check Alabama up into central Tennessee, and probably as far north as southern Kentucky as well, where some places could see quite a bit of rain. Yeah, rainfall amounts could be as high as close to 11 inches, indicated by the GFS. So yeah. A lot of rain's going to be coming out of the system here. Now, the only limiting factor that I see here out of the system here, it's going to be wind shear. At least early on, you do see here, we do have an upper level low that's going to be nearby out here. And that will bring us a dry air and a little bit of wind shear. But typically with upper level lows, they die down over time. So pretty much as that upper level low dies down, the wind shear starts to weaken and say with the dry air, the dry air starts to fade away. So really, when it gets to the Gulf of Mexico, when the upper level low starts to fade away, it's got a green light for intensification, possibly rapid intensification as well. And you do see with the system here, there's not much of any wind shear with the system here. Most of your wind shear stay pretty far to the northeast here. We have these covers in red here, so really, there's nothing really slowing this thing down. I mean, it really isn't. Let's check out the ocean heat content for the system. You do see here, you do have a hot spot here of where the system could go over. That's 175 right there. And that's going to be pretty bad there. That could lead to some, possibly some rapid intensification. But even in North, even for the Northern Caribbean, see we got some pretty high ocean heat content numbers. So this thing could intensify fairly quickly here in some of these areas in here. So that's definitely something we need to monitor. And here's the sea surface temperature, so chocolate pressure 9 it's right here. You're talking about its track could be moving up, something like this. And you can see here, it even has the potential to go over some of the warmest waters in the Atlantic, with where sea surface temperatures could be as high as 32 or 33 degrees Celsius. So this thing is definitely something to watch here. It's going, it could go over some of the highest ocean heat content and also some of the highest some of the warmest sea surface temperatures out there. So that's going to be the biggest concern out of the system here. So whenever it goes over those parts of the Gulf of Mexico, it could rapidly intensify. So here's my strength probabilities for tropical depression dying. I definitely think it's going to become a tropical storm and a Category 1 hurricane. Possibly a Category 2 as well, giving it an 80% chance. Then as you kind of get up the board here. Category 3, I brought it up to a 50% chance. I think it's got a probability of becoming a major hurricane. Category 4, a low at 20%. I'm still going to keep Category 5 a low at 5% since confidence is still a little bit lower end. I think we'll have a better idea on the strength here when it gets into the Gulf of Mexico as well and see how well organized it's going to be. 
So that's my strength probability. So let's check out the National Hurricane Center outlook here very quickly here. So we're going to refresh. This is 11.05. All right, there's your update there. Uh, so maximum sustained winds of 35 miles per hour with a pressure of 1,005 millibars. What things are certain here is this system is developing a little bit faster than what the malls thought with this system here, which is not a good sign. You do see here, so here's your cone of uncertainty here. They do forecast this to become a tropical storm probably as early as later today or tomorrow. And you start to see here, it kind of starts to intensify very quickly before it gets to Cuba, which we now have tropical storm warnings out there. And they do forecast this to become a Category 1 hurricane. That might be a Category 2 before making landfall. We'll see about that. And then it dies down into a tropical depression here. Don't focus too much on the center of the cone of uncertainty. The storm could go as far east as southeast of Louisiana, or it could go as far west as far southeast of Texas. So there's still some uncertainty here on the system here with the track here. But most malls in general right now keep it into central and southeastern Louisiana, which will also be the areas to watch over the next several days. So if anybody that lives in Louisiana, even into parts of southern Mississippi, maybe into parts of southeastern Texas, need to be prepared now because this system could be a major system over the next several days here. But anyways, guys, this is RV Guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like this video, hit that like button if you're new like my channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notifications so you never miss an upload. If you guys have questions about this, hit the comment section down below. Alright, you guys have questions. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.